Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem greatest common divisor of strings. We're given two strings S and T and we say that T divides S if and only if one of the strings can be made up by adding the other string multiple times. We could add it twice or three times or more times. Maybe even the two strings could be equal. Now, given two strings, our goal is to return the largest string x such that it divides both of these strings. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that string two will divide string one, because as we can see from this second example, we can't add this string twice to make this string, but there exists a substring, a b, which can make this string by adding it twice and can make this string by adding it three times. And also, don't let the problem trick you into assuming that string one is gonna be longer than string two. That's not necessarily gonna be the case. They just tell us we're given two arbitrary strings. Now, there are many ways to solve this problem. Some can go really deep into the math, but I'll keep it pretty intuitive. You don't need super fancy math for my solution. So how can we even brute force this problem? Well, we can't just come up with our own random substring x. Let's try to take a substring from one of these two strings, such as this one. We can try a itself. We can try this one, its length of one. Let's see if taking this and creating four copies of it, because this string is length four, we have to create four copies of this. Does that create this string? Well, that would create a, 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 a. That does not equal this string. Next, we could try the first two characters, which is of length two. So how many times would we need to add it to make this string? Well, we would need to add it twice because this is of length four. So this is kind of where the math intuition comes in. First of all, we're trying substrings from this one. Why did I choose this one? Well, because it's shorter than this one. We know that if we get all the way up until here, like this entire string, and we tried every previous substring and none of those worked, then creating a longer substring than this isn't going to work. That type of of x added together will never create this string because adding them together we have to create this string and we have to create this string so that's why we go with the smaller one though it doesn't make a huge difference i think but more importantly when we have a candidate x we take the length of this candidate x and we want to make sure that it is a factor of the length of this string because if it's not, then it will be impossible to create this string, such as, for example, if we had this string of length three, adding this together will never create a string of length four. We will, though, be able to create a string of length six, but that's not our goal here. We need an X that can create both of these strings. So another way to put it is when we have an X, we take that length of it and we make sure that the length of this string, which let's call L1, we can mod it by this length. And when we mod it by this length, there should not be a remainder. So this should equal zero. If it's not equal to zero, we're not even gonna try this candidate. And we wanna make sure the same is true for the other string too. So we make sure to mod it by the length. If it's not equal to zero, then we don't do it. But if it is equal to zero, then we consider it. And how exactly do we consider it? Well, when we have a candidate like X, how many times would we have to add X together to create a string of length four? Well, we can get that by taking four and dividing it by the length of this candidate, which is two. That gives us two times. Two times X is gonna create this string. What about this guy? Well, it has a length of six. So we take six divided by two, which we get the two from the length of X and then we get three. So we need three copies of it to create this string. And then all we do is check, and then we just add it two times, is it equal to this? And add it three times, is it equal to this guy? If it is, then we return the result. One last thing we can do is that instead of going from smallest to largest, we can be a bit greedy and try the longest possible one first. Because remember, we're trying to find 
the largest x. So let's start being greedy. Let's start with the four. Well, four doesn't divide with six, so we can't even try it. Then we try three. Well, it doesn't divide with four. Then we try two. Yes, it divides both of them and it does create both of them. So that's what we would return immediately. So to analyze the time complexity quickly, since we're going to be iterating through the smaller string and checking in the worst case, every substring of that, that's going to be our x candidate. We'll say that to do that, we're going to need to iterate between the minimum of m and n, where let's say m is the length of this guy and n is the length of this guy. And then every time we do that, in the worst case, given a candidate x, we're going to need to build this entire string, which is of length n. And we're going to need to build this entire string, which is of length m. And the time complexity to do that is going to be n plus m and we multiply these two together because this is what we're gonna call inside of that loop. So this is the overall time complexity. Now let's code it up. So we're gonna start with the length of each substring and then we're going to iterate through where L, this is an L, maybe I should make it capital, but I'll leave it lowercase for now. L is in the range of the minimum of length one and length two. And then we want to check if is divisor, I'm going to create a helper function to do this, where the substring, we can pick either one string one or string two, because if it's a divisor of one, it has to be a divisor of the other. So we'll pick just arbitrarily starting with string one. So a substring going from the beginning all the way to L. Oh, and I forgot with our loop, we want to actually iterate not starting from zero, but we want to start at the number itself and then iterate down, going down negative one each time. But this substring, we picked it from string one. We could have picked it from string two and the result would be the same because remember X, whatever it is, it has to go into both of the strings. And that's what we're going to check in our is divisor function. Now, if this were to return true, that would mean we found our result because we're doing this in a greedy way. So we would just return that string, string one going from the beginning up until L. And if we never find it out here, then we can just return an empty string. I think that's the default. Now to actually define our helper function, let's call it is divisor. It'll be given some length L. First, we wanna check that L is a factor of the length of both strings. The easy way to check that is length one modded by L. So if this is non-zero or if this is non-zero, then we know it's not a factor because it has to be zero. So if it's not a factor of both of the strings, then we just return immediately false. We know it's not a divisor of both strings. But if it is, well, at least the length of it is a divisor, then we want to actually try to build the string. But how do we build the string? Well, I'm going to create a couple variables, f1 and f2. These are going to be like the factors. I guess I should write out the entire variable, but I really hate writing out variables in leak code. So to get f1, we're just going to take the length of string one and divide it by L. We're doing integer division in Python because we need to round down. Well, this would never be a decimal anyway, because we made sure that it is a factor. So I guess you don't really need that, but I'll leave it anyway. L2 divided by L. So these are gonna be the factors. This is gonna tell us how many times we have to multiply. So when we take string, that substring we were talking about, our candidate L, this is it. We're gonna multiply that by F1, and we want to make sure that this is equal to string one. And we also want to make sure that this is true for string two. So here we just change this to F2 and we change this to string two. You could say we need to change this to string two. You could, it would work, but it'll work in both cases because remember our candidate is going to be the same for both strings anyway. And if both of these are true, we return true. If they're not, we return false. So we can literally just return this entire value. Oh, and I quickly, I just noticed that here we're passing in the string. We don't want to do that. We want to pass in L itself. So this is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.